Hello, I'm Tiffany Woolbrick, joining you today with another Life of a Scientist. Today, we will learn about one of the great early American scientists, Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker was a largely self-educated mathematician, astronomer, clockmaker, compiler of almanacs, activist, writer, the list goes on. He was a free black man in the 1700s when slavery was legal in America. He owned a farm near Baltimore, creating a business selling tobacco. He also became an active writer of almanacs and exchanged several letters with Thomas Jefferson, challenging him to do what he could to ensure racial equality. Born on November 9, 1731, in Ellicott's Mills, Maryland, Banneker was the son of an ex-slave named Robert and his wife, Mary. Because both of his parents were free, Benjamin escaped the wrath of slavery as well. He was taught to read by his maternal grandmother. Although he occasionally attended a one-room Quaker schoolhouse, Banneker was largely self-educated and did much of his learning through the voracious reading of borrowed books. When he was young, Banneker designed and built an irrigation system for the family farm and a wooden clock that was said to run and keep accurate time for more than 50 years. He began to accurately predict weather patterns and plan agricultural methods gaining him a lot of popularity with local farmers. Banneker learned everything he could about math and science and, in particular, astronomy. His interest in astronomy was encouraged by George Ellicott, a Quaker and amateur astronomer whose family owned nearby mills and lent Banneker books on the topic. As early as 1788, Banneker began to make astronomical calculations and accurately predicted a solar eclipse that occurred in 1789. In 1791, Andrew Ellicott, George Ellicott's cousin, hired Banneker to help him survey the land that would become the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. There, Banneker also recorded the movement of the stars, using a zenith sector. Banneker's true acclaim, however, came from his almanacs, which he published for six consecutive years between 1792 and 1797. These handbooks included his own astronomical calculations, as well as opinion pieces, literature, medical information, and forecasts on the tides the latter being especially useful to fishermen. Outside of his almanacs, Banneker also published information on bees and calculated the cycle of the 17-year locust. Banneker's talents and curiosity of the natural world garnered a lot of attention and success, but his accomplishments extended into other realms as well, including civil rights. In 1791, Banneker wrote a 1,400-word letter to Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of State and slaveholder. In his letter, Banneker acknowledged he was one of the African race and recognized he was taking a liberty by writing. He chided Jefferson and the other patriots for their hypocrisy, enslaving people like him while fighting the British for their own independence. He said, How pitiable it is to reflect that although you were so fully convinced of the benevolence of the Father of mankind, and of his equal and impartial distribution of those rights and privileges which he had conferred upon them, that you should at the same time be found guilty of that most criminal act which you professedly detest in others, with respect to yourselves. Banneker wrote the letter in hopes that Jefferson would, quote, readily embrace every opportunity to eradicate that train of absurd and false ideas and opinions which so generally prevail with respect to us. The further support, to further support his 
point. Banneker included a handwritten manuscript of his almanac in 1792, containing his astronomical calculations. Jefferson soon responded to Banneker with a letter of his own. I thank you sincerely for your letter of the 19th. Nobody wishes more than I do to see such proofs as you exhibit. That nature has given our black brethren talents equal to those of the other colors of men, and that the appearance of a want of them is owing merely to the degraded condition of their existence both in Africa and America. I have taken the liberty of sending your almanac to Monsieur de Condorcet, Secretary of the Academy of Sciences at Paris, and member of the Philanthropic Society, because I consider it as a document to which your whole color had a right for their justification against the doubts which have been entertained of them. Banneker's outspokenness on the issue of slavery earned him widespread support from abolitionists, abolitionist societies in Maryland and Pennsylvania, both of which helped him publish his almanac. Never married, Banneker continued to conduct his scientific studies throughout his life. On October 9, 1806, Banneker died in his sleep at 75 years old. During his funeral, Banneker's log cabin home caught on fire and quickly burned down. Nearly everything was destroyed, including his personal effects, writings, and wooden clock. The cause of the fire was never determined. Fortunately, a few of his writings, included, including his astronomical journal, were on loan to his neighbor, George Ellicott. They were returned to Banneker's nephew, providing future historians some of the few records of his life known to exist. Wow, what an incredibly accomplished man. If you have ever enjoyed a farmer's almanac, you can thank Benjamin Banneker for his influence and for our nation's capital, for its size and its layout. That was Benjamin Banneker's work. He was a man of many talents. And while he was considered a free man, he did face many challenges in his life and he continued to fight for equality. Thank you for joining me on another Life of a Scientist.